When I put my videos together on farming, many people ask me, what is the farm crisis that small farmers are facing? Here I've put together 10 items that are coming forward. Let's get started. Here are my 10, top 10 items that I think small farmers are facing in the coming future. Of course, the biggest are the change in our American diet, and of course, climate change will affect them on a daily basis. The Climate Accord Greenhouse Gas Reduction, the United States has signed up for a 26 to 28 percent reduction by 2025. Of course, we haven't met the 2020 goal yet. Here's a report from USDA showing that 10 percent of agriculture, which again is by anyone's estimate is very low, contributes to the greenhouse gases. So even if you reflect 25% reduction, that 25% reduction goes across the board, agriculture will have to change dramatically. Nutrient loss reduction, you've seen this uh, chart from me before. Uh, it started with a USGS study of domestic wells in the Midwest here. 50% had at least one nuisance contaminant that impairs taste, odor, and aesthetic consideration. The, the interesting point is this was done from 1991 to 2004. You can imagine that things have only gotten much worse. As we see here in Illinois, uh, 2016, the Illinois EPA put out a goal to reduce uh, nutrient runoffs by 15% and 25%. Reported report in 2021 shows that these nutrient losses have increased, not been reduced. And now we are 60% above the phosphorus goal and 28% above the nitrogen goal. An interesting thing is the University of Illinois Advisory Service in 2016 was advising 160 pounds per acre for nitrogen for corn ground and half that for phosphorus. This year they're advertising 200 pounds per acre and a half that for phosphorus to get maximum yields. Lost export markets, as we know we have a growing trade deficit. This has to be addressed at some point as we've seen with the China tariffs when we try to, which is our biggest trade deficit. We try to address this, those countries will put tariffs on our commodities, which again reduce that trade. The forecast for corn exports shows the United States being flat because of these issues. Ethanol decline, again there's no doubt that we're moving towards electric vehicles. There's been tremendous improvements in this technology. By 2030 it's showing 30% of our vehicle sales will be electric vehicles. This means a 30% reduction in fuel, a 30% reduction, reduction in ethanol. Again, all these trends continue to drive the corn soybean rotation, that there's less and less need for it. Food safety. This issue has been, again, growing for many, many decades of the people against genetically engineered crops, people against all these pesticides. Here shows data between the death rates in the United States and the use of glyphosate and the use of genetically engineered corn and, corn and soybeans. Billionaire land grants. This has been going on for a few years now. It turns out the, the billionaires are very interested in owning farmland. As a result, almost all farmland in Illinois and the Midwest goes now up for auction so people from across the country can bid on it. It's clear that these billionaire land owners are not interested in farming the land, they're interested in owning it. So what happens when you have many people own the land but a and other people work it, it's called tenant farming. Bill Gates at this point is the largest owner of farmland in the country and clearly he's not going to be a farmer. Farm subsidy reduction, the last two years have kept many farmers in business as we know, 45 billion dollars in 2020. Unfortunately only 20 percent of this goes to the small farmers, 80 percent goes to the big farmers. And now it's forecasted to be dropping. It'll drop some more. This clearly was a one-time thing. Continued overproduction, what more can be said? This has been the goal of big ag, the corn soybean rotation since the 1960s, as we see. This trend is clear. Healthy diet, it doesn't take long to search the internet and find thousands and thousands of reports about the relationship of our diet and how unhealthy it is. This clearly is now showing up as the United States is leading the world in heart disease, respiratory diseases, and diabetes. One can find many reports on the internet about the issues with soybeans and corn food, for high, especially high fructose corn syrup. An interesting study here just recently came out from the University of Bonn. It says meat consumption worldwide must fall by at least 75% for sustainable consumption. Climate change, our last issue. Here again, we live right on the borderline between where it's the forecast of the effects of climate change, productivity can either be going up 
by 20 percent or down by 20 percent. Depends on whether you believe you're in the green side of this line or the orange side of this line. So farmers, again, many of them can ignore the effects of climate change because they think it will not affect them. It's the type of betting that they usually try to make. So as we look at these items, you can see that any one of them, maybe they can duck, maybe the politicians will help them through, maybe the communities will ignore. But eventually all of these are going to overwhelm them and come forward and they can't be ignored. And at that point, there will be a big crisis for farmers to change. As this change comes, how is it going to play out? Here we go. Soaring food prices push more Cargill family members onto the world's richest 500 list. Why don't we get farmers to change? Regenerative agriculture is a conservation approach to food and farming systems. It's been proven to reduce input costs. It's better for the environment. It helps you grow a number of different crops, as we saw out in Montana. It focuses on topsoil regeneration and biodiversity, things that we need. We want a variety in our foods, not corn and soybean that's been processed into 1,000 different ingredients. One interesting thing is I've sent links to my videos to all of our U.S. Senators in the five-state region, the House of Representatives that cover us, as well as 20 administrators at the University of Illinois, including the Chancellor, who claims to have an ag background. Not one of them replied to me when I did this in December. I resent them in February. Again, not one of these 50 emails were replied to. I'm wondering, why will no one talk about this? Why is this not important? Why doesn't our community care? Why doesn't someone care? The Farm Bill comes up for renewal next year. We as citizens need to move that Farm Bill forward. We need to move it towards the future. As these trends start to reduce the need for corn and soybeans, we need to be ahead of that trend and encourage it and not be reactive to it and continue to subsidize it when it's no longer needed. Let's care. Let's change this model. Mm -hmm.